This week I'll show you how to use an old Polaroid instant camera in the studio. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace. Remember, Exploring Photography is brought to you by Adorama. Well, the nice thing about Adorama is they don't just sell the latest, greatest gadgets. They also sell used gear. And one of the things that I really miss is shooting with film. Now, I know a lot of people say film is dead. Don't believe them. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with film. And one of the things that I love to do is shoot with my Polaroid land camera. I've had this thing for years. And you can buy these at Adorama Used for about 50 bucks around there, uh, depending on how many they have in stock. So they might not have some in today, but they might have them tomorrow. They run about 50 bucks, maybe a little less, a little bit more. Now the neat thing about these guys is if you're shooting out and about, uh, they are automatic. So you just sort of follow the numbers, they've got some numbers on here, and you take a picture, you get great shots. But what about using these in a studio? Well, you can actually use these in a studio situation, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. The nice thing about land cameras, some of them have this little terminal at the front. It's a sync terminal, a little PC terminal. What that allows you to do, it was designed for an external flash. So you could plug in a, basically a speed light and trigger that using this little uh, terminal. But that also sends a signal to any flash. So if you're in a studio like I am, um, here's a uh, sync cable. It's just a little cable that goes between a studio flash and on the end you can see this little PC terminal and you can plug that right into your Polaroid land camera. Now when you take a picture, it sends a signal through this cable and tells the flash to fire. So you can use the cable, go old school, or you can do what I like to do and that is use a pocket wizard so I'm not uh, attached to the actual flash itself. So with the pocket wizard, you just get a little teeny cable. On the other end, you got a little PC uh, cable right there. And that plugs in just like the sync cable would be. And now when you take a picture, it tells the radio to send a signal. That sends a signal to the flash. It fires and everything is all good. So now we have our camera set to send a signal to our flashes. So those two are in sync. But the question is, what aperture value, what ISO, and what shutter speed do you use with this guy? Because notice, it's not like a normal digital camera. There is no aperture value anywhere on here. There's no shutter speed anywhere on here. So you have to figure out what values to use. Well, I did a little research and discovered that most Polaroid land cameras have an aperture value of f8. And you can change that to a different aperture value by moving a little slider on the top. But we're going to just keep that wide open at the slowest speed. That gives you an aperture value of f8. And so we know that when we meter, our lights need to meter at f8. We really don't have any choice there. We can't go to 2.8 or 4.5. It's just fixed at f8. So we know that. What about the shutter speed? I don't know. There isn't any shutter speed on here. And this actually has a little light kind of metery thing in here. And it changes the shutter speed to be slower or faster depending on light. And so what will happen is when all the ambient lights are turned off, it's going to be a really slow shutter speed. But we don't care because we know from our uh, background in studio lighting that the shutter really doesn't impact studio lights at all unless you have ambient light on. So we're going to turn it off when we're shooting so the only light that the camera is going to see is the light from the flash. So what is the ISO value? Well we're actually using ASA value because it's film and I'm using some Fuji film. This is instant film and this has a rating of 100. So on my light meter I will set my ISO to 100 and whatever you buy, whatever film speed you buy, you just translate in, that into the ISO. So this is 100. I'll set my light meter to 100. I know that I need to be shooting at f8. For a shutter speed, just use a speed of around 60 or 100. It doesn't really matter in this instance. So now that we have everything set up, um, let's bring a model in. So Sharon is going to join us. And what we're going to do now is we're going to meter and make sure we're at f8. Now I know we are because we already did this in advance. So but just to check everything, I'm going to do this. And yep, we're at f8, so I know that our lights are set correctly, our camera is set to an aperture value of f8, our shutter speed, who cares what that is, our ISO is matched because we have the same film speed, so we're ready to shoot. The only thing we have to do now is turn off all of our ambient lights, our video lights, or else it's going to uh, play tricks on our film. We're going to take a few shots, and then I'll show you the post-processing, which really is just taking film out of the camera. So let's have some fun, take a few pictures, and I'll show you the results. 
All right, well, let's take some pictures. The first thing I need to do is focus. I do that with these little sliders right here. After I focus, I'm gonna take a picture and then I'm gonna take the film out, put it on my little table and we'll do the post processing. It'll be a lot of fun. All right, Sharon, look right at me. I'm focusing using this little wacky focus system. Looks good. And now let's take our first instant film shot. Perfect. You can see it was really slow. We're gonna turn on some ambient light. And then what I'll do here is I'm gonna pull this. And then once I pull that, Bam, out comes our photo. And then what I do is I start the timer. Bloop. And that needs to roll for about 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds. Um, and I know that because there's this little guide right here that tells me the temperature of the room and based on the temperature of the room, how long that needs to go. So we'll just let that finish out and then I'll show you the rest of this. We're at about 32 seconds now, so we're getting close. At about 35 seconds, I'm gonna open this up. So I just peel these open just like this. And look at that. We have our studio lighting set up. It's pretty cool. It's uh, not perfect, but that's what I love about instant film is you get these really uh, amazing looks. And the thing is, there is no duplicate of this. There's no raw file, there's no JPEG file. That is it. So whatever we shot is what we got. It is a perfect, snapshot, literally perfect snapshot of that moment in time. It can never be created again. And that's what film does that I love. So we're gonna take a few more black and whites. We're gonna shoot some color and then we'll show you just a little collage of all the stuff we got today. And it's just a lot of fun. Well, it's quick and easy to shoot with a Polaroid land camera in the studio and other instant film cameras will work uh, the same. You might need to Google and figure out what those aperture values are, but remember the shutter speed doesn't really matter. The ISO value is equivalent to the film speed that you buy. So just look on the box and you can buy that film and you can buy the cameras at Adorama. So just go to Adorama.com to do all this stuff. It's just something that's really fun to do on a Saturday when you have some spare time or maybe for a new art project. The other thing that you can do with uh, film like this, Fuji Instant Film or Polaroid Film. You can do emulsion transfers. You can uh, actually go and color these with different colored pens. You can scratch on them with uh, needles and stuff and do other things with those. You can do collages. There's just tons of stuff that you can do with Instant Film. And so have fun Googling projects that you can do or just zip over to the Adorama Learning Center and you'll see other tips and tricks all about shooting with film and of course with digital cameras. So thanks very much Sharon. It was a lot of fun and thanks for joining me this time. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any Adorama TV episodes because we'd hate for you to miss something awesome and I'll see you again next time. This week we're doing roids in the studio. <laughs> All right, looking right at me. Need some music. If you are ready to upgrade your system, we want to help. We can buy your used photo and video equipment and we'll give you an honest, fair offer. Visit Adorama.com for more information.